Two of my favorite technologies are Python and Kubernetes. When these two get combined, only best things can happen. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can obtain the information about Kubernetes resources from within your Python code and also how to do the basic operations on your Kubernetes cluster. When I say Kubernetes resources, I mean the pods, deployment, namespaces, etc. For this example, I'm using AWS EKS cluster. So that's a prerequisite that you should have a running Kubernetes cluster in your environment and you should be able to access it. You should also install a Kubernetes client for Python. And it's very simple. You simply need to use pip install Kubernetes to install that client. I'm also using kubectl utility for this demo purpose to show you how it looks like from the kubectl. All the code files which I'm using are in my GitHub repository and the link is in the video description. Okay, now let's get started. So in this code chunk, let's review it line by line. The purpose of this code is to obtain or retrieve the information about EKS cluster nodes from within my Python code. Now let me walk you through line by line from um, about this code. For the first two lines, all I'm doing is importing some packages and clients. So the first package is sys, and then I'm importing the client from my Kubernetes package, which we installed with the pip command. Afterwards, I'm using load underscore cube underscore config, which will load the configuration from a cluster from my local cube config file. If you want, you can also use remote cube config. Now that we have loaded the configuration, we can use the client module to interact with the Kubernetes resources. At line number six, we are instantiating core v1 API class from the client module. Once you are done with line number six, then you can freely use the functions from this package. For example, in this code, I'm using list underscore node to retrieve the node from my Kubernetes cluster. Before I go any further, let me show you what it looks like when I run kubectl get nodes. So as you can see, I'm running EKS Parget for this demo, and we have around five Parget nodes running, and we want to obtain same information from our Python code. So in order to do that, we need to use list underscore node function. And this code does exactly that. This code, uh, because the data which we obtain from this command is in JSON format, which is quite huge. So instead of just putting the whole data out there, I'm just retrieving a couple of um, useful bits of information out of that output. So before I run this whole um, code, uh, let me show you the raw format of JSON which we obtain from this code. So I'm just commenting these lines and I'm just uncommenting the top two just to give you an idea what I mean. If I, <clears throat> sorry, so if I run this code, this should give me a long JSON output. As you can see, this is almost everything which is associated with this node, which is quite large. So instead of using that, all I'm doing in my code, retrieving the information which I need. So let me comment this again and uncomment my previous code. So as you can see, I'm using JSON notation to retrieve the host name of this node and OS image which is being used and then all the addresses which are present. So let's run this and see what happens. So now this is quite readable. So first I'm getting the node name, then the node image, and then I'm going through all the address types which are there with their name. Okay, so this is how we get the node information. Now let's check another code chunk where we can get the namespace information. So let me go to another code file. In this, until nine number six, again, we are doing the same thing. We are importing some of the um, 
um, libraries and um, from these packages then we are loading the cube config file and then instantiating our client once that's done again the familiar syntax i'm using list underscore namespace to get all the namespace information and this is the same information which we get from our kubectl command like kubectl get ns so these are the namespaces which i already have in my cluster if i run the above code let's see what happens so python yes. yes as you can see i'm just creating the namespace here and then this namespace thing it gives me a whole lot of information so instead of printing all of it let me print only the namespace name so i will clear my screen and run this code again there you go so it is telling me these are the namespaces which are present there so if i run kubectl again these are the same namespaces which are present same information so next lines you can uh, this is another way of doing the same thing which i did above but you know in a more pythonic way i'm just using an iterator to print out the namespaces okay now let's check how we can do the same with the pods in the pod thing again i'm doing the same thing until line number six and then i'm using this function list pod for all namespaces and from there i'm printing which pod and it's the name of the pod and what is its status and on which node it is running so now let me clear the screen and run the above code yeah so it is showing me that i have around five pods running on these fargate nodes right and similarly you can obtain lot of other information as what is the container image this pod is running um, which namespace is it in and so on and so forth so you can see how easily we can programmatically obtain this information from kubernetes by using this client now let's also do uh, create a pod by using this client let me clear the screen Okay, so in this code chunk, again, the first two lines, uh, sorry, the first six lines are related to um, importing stuff and then loading the cube config and instantiating our core API. After that's done, we need to create a pod. And you know that pod is the smallest unit in Kubernetes and it, is, it acts as just as a envelope or encapsulation or abstraction on top of the containers. So pod is a specification of a container and this specification we do it in deployment but in this case we are keeping it simple we are just using pod and its related, related container so the first thing we are doing in line number eight we are from line number eight to ten we are just specifying which container we are using its name and its image i'm just using busybox as a test afterwards i'm just throwing it in our container array because the later on function needs uh, this container in an array for me after that i'm specifying my pod specification in pod specification all i'm doing is just giving it the namespace name i'm putting it in the default one and i'm giving the pod name uh, the container i'm uh, the pod name as busy pod once that's done i am giving it the pod body so the client.v1 pod this is the same yaml uh, manifest uh, syntax that we use so api version kind is pod and then the container image and the container specification with the pod so this goes into this pod body and then all we need to do is to create this namespace pod in this namespace so all i'm doing is i'm creating this pod in the default namespace so let's check what exact what is currently running in my default namespace because I'm not specifying any namespace, so it's a default one. Nothing is running there. So let's run above this code and see if it creates our pod. So kubectl get pod. You see, now the busy pod is running. 
and the status is pending. I think it will remain pending because I'm using taints on my nodes just to. As you can see, it's, it hasn't scheduled it because I'm running some taints, which is fine. I mean, uh, for the demo purposes, we are able to see that when we run the above code, the pod is there. Now, similarly, as we have created it, let's use another code to delete this pod. So again, the prerequisites are there, and then we are using delete namespace pod command to delete my PC pod. So let's run this code. So it says it has deleted now at the pod, so there is no pod. So this is how we can use this Kubernetes Python cl client in our environment, Kubernetes cluster to do the basic operations. I hope this has helped. If you have any questions or feedback, please put them in the comments. Thank you very much.